sitting in those chairs. Is this on? It's okay, you can hear me pretty much. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how much of the mucus. It just makes us look like a fish. Do my shake thing, come on. What? Do your dance thing. The shake thing? Yeah. No, 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 you said shake thing. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Was it like to work with uh, Billy Bob Thornton? Are you getting a live feed from your Twitter fans? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Billy Bob. Wait, 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 wait. At uh, Elizabeth <laughs> says. Billy Bob and Ben Stiller in School for Scoundrels. What yeah. was it like to work with those? Like, I, I could only imagine what goes on, what went on on set. Was it funny? Were they all serious? Well, you know, they say there's like, you know, two kind of comedians, right? There's the ones who are like, the very serious comedians who are really funny on screen, but there's like a darkness to them. And then there's, you know, the other comedians who are just like, you know, they're dorks and idiots and they're funny and they're just light and easy. Uh, I think Ben is one of those darker ones where, like, he's very serious, you know? Uh, uh, and it was, it was great because he worked on, you know, School for Scoundrels, like I said, but he was actually the producer of uh, Blades of Glory. So I got to work with him a couple times and I, I loved him. I mean, it, I think he's an incredibly talented guy. But yeah, he, he's a little bit, he knows his craft and he gets very serious and he's like thinks everything out and it's planned. Uh, and then someone like Will Ferrell who's just like, hey, what's going on? Let's, uh, let's make this, I can't believe we're gonna ice skate and you're an idiot if you're like me. Uh, so it was great. And then Billy Bob Thornton who is like, you know, he can be really funny, he can be very serious. Uh, but in person he's like just a southern gentleman. He's this, uh, he always seems like he's got, he's very polite and very open and tells everything. He's super dirty, he loves to tell dirty jokes. Uh, you never hang out with your grandma and your aunt. Your mom, your kids, or anybody I care about. Uh, yeah. No, they, but they were awesome. They were really awesome. Nice. That's 
school. Yeah, I have this uh, board game here called Whip It. Uh, <laughs> I guess my question is, how the hell did you end up on the cover? Well, <laughs> No, that's not me. Uh, that's just a uh, look-alike. Uh, no, this is a classic story of you know people who I guess rise to fame, right? Yes, share it with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite thing in the world. You know, yeah, everybody take a good look at something that was done without my consent. Um, that's true. They just took your image. Well, yeah. So the quick short version. Oh, this is guy's gonna. Be He's <laughs> already down in the dumps. Take your one down. No, it's just, no. When I uh, right after I did Napoleon, because I was still a college student, and then and in those kind of you know I wasn't SAG. I didn't have an agent. I was an official. I was just a poor college student, and so I was like, well, I should get like headshots. And like a friend of a friend said, hey, my company does stuff. It's a stock photo company, and they'll do, they do this all the time for local actors, and they'll take their headshot free if they get a couple other stock photo shots. And I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, oh, okay, so it'd be a go like, you know, doing some stupid looks. It was a horrible headshot, I never even used it. And then, and it was right after that, and it was sold to this company that they legally could use it, so. Yeah, if you're in the Utah area from like 2005 to 2008, you can see billboards of me saying like, click it or like, you know, the, like you gotta, you know, uh, fasten your seatbelt or you'll get a ticket. You know, but billboards that say, gosh, it's like, yeah, I didn't see a dot. Or a, a RuPaul or whatever you guys use here. A <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> So thanks for buying that. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that was a white elephant gift exchange. You didn't pay for that. This was a value note. Value note. Okay. Uh, so someone already said, "Wait, I thought this was gonna be a John Heater trivia game." Uh, you're, not you're not in the game. Good. No play. Good. <laughs> because I totally knew how to do that. Um, and then I was just like, ah, oh, it'll die down. But then, you know, they can't. There was like, you could go to, uh, there's those like weird vending, it was not a vending machine, but like a party place, like uh, if you go bowling or sometimes they have those machines where you could go and it's like a photo booth, but it's like animated. It like takes your a photo of you, but puts you on an animated body. It was weird. Yeah. And as the test, one, they had my face. My buddy was like, dude, look, John, you're on this machine. It was one of those photos. I'm like, oh, it's going to haunt me for the rest of the day. <laughs> and here I am talking with a lot of people about it. They win, I lose. Any other questions? Yeah. What's, uh, what's, what's new in the world of John, the acting? Oh, Is that an air hug? Sure. <laughs> uh, let's do. Uh, I've got. So I've been doing a lot of voiceover. I don't know if you guys know Pickle and Peanut. No. <laughs> it was a great self promotion there. Uh, Pickle and Peanut at Disney. You've heard of Disney. Yeah. Disney XD. Dis Disney. Disney. Uh, Disney XD is a channel. I don't. Think, someone said Canada doesn't really get Disney up here. Oh, we do. That's the yeah. moment, right? You have to pay for well, We have extra too. I mean, Disney isn't like, oh, you Americans get everything for free. Canadians, Mexicans, they all have to pay for it. You know? uh, no, uh, yeah, no. If you have Disney Channel, Disney XD, it's a cartoon. They call them peanuts. It's great. I love it. I'm super proud of it. We're about to air the second season in November. I don't know what that means for Canada. I'm sure it's going to come out. So check it out. Um, 
And then, uh, let's see, what else? I mean, yeah, there's various anime stuff. Uh, there's a movie actually out now called The Tiger Hunter. If you go to thetigerhunter.com, it's, it's an independent film. It's a comedy I'm in with uh, uh, Danny Booty from Community. Uh, and he, no, not he, but uh, the film is kind of, it's making its way slowly through theaters. So hopefully, I think they're planning on, a lot of the filmmakers are actually from Canada. So I'm assuming it's going to make it up here at some point. Uh, so go to the website and you can like actually say, we want it in our city. It's a great film. The whole family will love it. So yeah, the Tiger Hunter. Doc. Check it out. You got that. Uh, when you're filming Napoleon, do you think, or did you ever think it would end up with you getting your own action figure? Action figure. <laughs> uh, with a gun and everything. Like, exchangeable arms. I wish. And when I got that action figure, I was like, oh, the flipping the legs don't even move. What's that? Who gives? Um, yeah, no. I, when we made the film, I mean, again, it was an independent, so we had no connection to uh, a, a studio, no rights. I mean, we weren't business-minded. We were like, we're making a funny movie that we think is funny. And so we had no idea would ever, the, anybody else, the rest of the country, the rest of the state, the rest of the world would ever see it. Uh, but when we were making it, we definitely fantasized about like, this movie, man, I'm telling you, like, if we can make, they can have dolls or bolstering dolls for each character with their catchphrases. I mean, we really kind of saw the future, and yeah, we definitely thought, oh, they could make figurines out. Everything had to like talk, you know? And uh, so we had those ideas, but we, I, it was probably not even a year or so later, I was getting a full body scan at the Farland <laughs> Studios, like making the figurines. I was like, this is incredible. I gotta suck in the gut. <laughs> or else they'll be immortalized in plastic forever. <laughs> that was incredible. Anyone else? Um, I have a story to tell. Do you have a story to tell? Yes. Oh, well, there's a seat up here. <laughs> <laughs> There's your shirt. Um, yeah, there's, there's your shirt for you. Should have voted for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. I got one for you. Yeah. Where did you get your uh, inspiration for Napoleon Dynamite from? Uh, for the character. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, well, so like I said, Jared has to wrote and directed the film. I mean, we were both college buddies, and he knew me. He came to me with the script, so he, I mean, he created the character. Uh, but you know, it was. Kind of like any film, you know, you have to workshop things. And he, he has his own idea in his mind. And he got the inspiration from his younger brothers and kind of his life. It's very autobiographical of him growing up in Preston, Idaho, in that actual place where we shot it. Um, and I, but he was like, I think you could capture it. So we talked about it. I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my younger brothers. This is me. So he's very much a younger brother. Inspired by younger brothers across the, the world. Um, I have two younger brothers, and I mean, they, I mean, I took directly from him. My, my younger brothers were all, I mean, that's exactly how they talked growing up. It was just like, let me get, stop eating all the cereal, you idiot. And I'm like, sorry. Um, but it's very much kind of how I talked and how my younger brothers talked and, uh, and, and dressed a little bit. I never wore shy of moon boots. <laughs> I had those acid wash jeans and, and thought they were pretty sweet. Um, yeah, uh, I 
I mean, yeah, for sure, a lot of, for myself, my younger brothers, I did a lot of this. It was very autobiographical for the director and very much for me. I went to scout camp. I made boondoggle keychains for real at scout camp. So when we had to make all the boondoggles that they're handing out to the, I mean, we, didn't have, we had production designers, but I was like, I know how to make them. So in between the scenes, I was off in the corner just like, <laughs> You guys want to learn how to, I need some help here. Your side to the green and yellow, so I don't get the. So yeah, I made a lot of those spoon toggles myself. Uh, I was very proud of it, and uh, and I used to draw. It was a very authentic film. I like that. I did all the drawings myself because uh, that was very important to me to nail that look. Because I thought I was a pretty good artist, and I was. I mean, I I, I majored. I I, uh, I got a degree in fine arts. Uh, but, and so I was like, no, I know what you're looking for. You're looking for those kids in middle school who were like, so I just took an art class and learned how to do cross shading. And so they do about everything, and then the proportions are just a little off. And, uh, and that's where Trisha came from. And, uh, and everybody's like arched backs in the light of butt. I was took a lot of pride in those drawings. And it really did take me a couple of hours to do. <laughs> All right, is there one back there? Yeah, there's one back there. Um, what's, what was your favorite scene or line from the movie? Like, I mean, probably the favorite part, or like, that was so funny or so fun to do. Uh, my favorite scene, um, well, my favorite scene to watch, it was kind of like the favorite scene to actually also be in, to just watch, where I didn't do anything. The Rex Kwan Do scene was kind of my favorite, just, I mean, like, I, I bust it up every, I mean, every time I watch it, I still like, because it was, you know, I don't have to do anything in the scene, I'm just kneeling down and watching Kim get beat up over and over <laughs> by Rex, and I, and if you look very closely, uh, you can actually see, because, you know, we only had a few takes. If you look in the mirror and you can see me, one second you can see me break character, I'm like, <laughs> like try, I tried so hard and I told, after they said, okay, we're moving on to the next thing, I told the producer, I was like, I don't think I had a clean shot of me not laughing. I don't know if you want to reshoot. He's like, no, 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 we're good. I don't think anybody's going to see it. So here I am all telling you to go watch it. Um, but the focus is on Kim. Nobody's watching it. But yeah, look for that and you'll see it. Uh, that was my favorite thing to watch. Uh, to shoot. Um, I don't know, I mean, everything really. I mean, I loved every single actor was incredible to work with. Uh, the uh, the steak scene was really fun because it was challenging, you know, that felt like filmmaking. Like, we're doing it, we're like riding this bike over and over, and they kept missing, they kept missing, they kept missing. I'm like, oh, idiots, you know. And, and finally, it was Uncle Rico, John Christ, who plays Uncle Rico, is like, what are you talking about? I'm supposed to be the one, like, his, it was just some stage guy who was throwing, he was like, look, I know, I used to play baseball in college, I mean, when I was younger, I got this, you guys suck at this, he grabbed the second, and just nailed me, and that was it. And we were like, all right, I don't think we're getting it again, and my freaking nose started bleeding, and I was like, all right, we're moving on, because he ripped the glasses right off my head, and I was like, oh crap, staying character, I was like so worried I was going to break character. Uh, I was like staying here to save because it's never gonna happen again. So anyways, yeah. That was long. Alright, we got time for about two more questions and then we gotta wrap it up. Oh her boyfriend has something. Um, I thought the car scene was wicked. I just wanna know like why the build up. And then how's Tina? You wanna know why what? Why the car scene like stalled? Uh and then and then what's your second part is how's, how's Tina? How's Tina? Tina Majorina or Tina the Long? Oh, okay. Um <laughs> The, the cartoon, for those who didn't see it, check it out. You can find it on iTunes or DVD. The cartoon is rad. We have the whole original cast come back. They're saying director, writer. So it's it really is, cap, it captures the same, I, I want to say essence of the film, except it's Simpsonized. You know, it's cartoon. There's weird things that happen. Ligers talk. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that didn't really happen in the movie. But watch the cartoons, great. Yeah, we did six episodes, and I think because they aired during the Super Bowl, uh, stupid people still like football better than deploying. 
Uh, no, I don't know. You know, I, I like to think of it that that was our sequel. You know, kind of like put those six episodes together. But I really don't think the world of Napoleon's dead. I mean, I think there's definitely the opportunity. Or, I mean, there has been talks about people like, oh, maybe we can resurrect as an, another animated show, but in a different way. I don't know, we'll see. Um, answer to your second question, I'm pretty sure that llama's dead. <laughs> <laughs> their lifespan is not as long. Um, it was, uh, that, uh, that, that llama's name was Dolly, actually. Dolly Llama. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, rest in peace, Dolly, but I'm not a huge fan of llamas. I, you know, that was all very real to me. Every day, like, again, Grandma loved that llama. Her making out with it was all unscripted. And then, and me throwing the food in it was unscripted because I'm supposed to feed her. The stupid llama wouldn't eat the food, so I was like, eat it, stupid llama. And I get that was actually the other scene. I had a very hard time not laughing because I was trying to stay in character, but throwing, but being mean to an animal in a non-violent way is very funny. <laughs> like, they, it just, I felt so bad throwing the food and like, it didn't hit the animal at the law, it just, it was very funny and I had to stop, keep myself from laughing. As a character. I don't know. Uh, when you were on uh, Ninja Turtles as Napoleon Bonfrog, yeah. your idea just to the Napoleon boys, they asked me to? Oh, uh, they asked me to, yeah. No, they, uh, one of the producers was actually, a, a Napoleon was a writer on the show. So he was like, hey, I know John, let's bring him in. If you remember the original Napoleon Bonfrog, let's bring him back and we kind of do his thing. It kind of just made sense. And uh, I know the people at Nickelodeon who do that. So, yeah, it was a blast to kind of just do the unofficial Napoleon Dynamite for Ninja Turtles. You had a question. Um, out of all the films and all your voice that you've done, which one of the actors or co-workers that you worked with was the best one? So she's yes. wondering which of all the actors I've worked with. Yeah, basically. Uh, voiceover or not, so yeah. is, is the best. Um, oh man, I'm really, I've been blessed. I've worked with, I pretty much have loved everyone I've worked with. And I, I I can't speak to say that for everybody. I'm sure if people have worked with Nightmare. I've heard so many great stories from other actors I've worked with, like, oh, so-and-so was a bit of a diva or whatever. Um, but I, I loved everyone. Will Ferrell's great to work with. I love David Spade and Ben Chalmers. He was awesome. Nick Swartz and I got to work with, like, a couple times, and he's incredible. Like, very, very funny guy, very nice. Um, uh, who else? Um, I don't know. I just... They've all been wonderful, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah. I just you get very close with your, you know, your fellow. I, I mean, everybody in Napoleon, obviously. I mean, both Tina, and John Grice, Efren is really funny. Um, he's complete opposite of his character. <laughs> like uh, he talks yeah. <laughs> normally, um, and uh, so yeah, we'll hang out sometimes. And uh, no, they're they're all awesome, and uh, I love them all. All right, that's all the time we have for today, guys. Oh. Thank you, guys.